This concludes the events of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It opened the floodgates of the Call of Duty franchise to expand its popularity and became a cult favorite amongst modern video games, and set the tone for the rest of the franchise. Now, let's start my favorite part, the connecting events between Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2. After the Russian loyalist rescue, Captain Price was captured by the Ocean Nationalists, labeled missing in action and incarcerated in a gulag 40 miles east of Petrovavlos, Russia, for five years, known as Prisoner 627. The Russian loyalists become eradicated due to the Ocean National Party after they gained lethal control of Russia and viewed them as renegade hostiles. Despite the death of Imran Sakaev and military loss of power, the Ocean Nationalists managed to take power of Russia and honor Imran Sakaev as a hero and a martyr. They even erected an effigy in Moscow as Imran Zakayev, hero of the new Russia, and a testament and name an airport in Moscow after him. In the news broadcast, at the conclusion of Call of Duty 4, it was rumored that the Ultra Nationalist Party was in a leadership struggle. The problem was later resolved as the Ultra Nationalist Party became split in two, one being Boris Volchevsky, becoming the legitimate president of Russia, the other being the infamous Vladimir Makarov the wild dog and head of a violent mercenary group. Before, Vladimir Makarov was a protege of Imran Sakhaev. He also begins working with the black market arms dealer Alejandro Rojas, who was born on November 6, 1932. At this point, the Ultranationalist Party was gaining strong support and having a powerful political stronghold rather than a military one. Five years after Call of Duty 4, Lieutenant General Herschel von Shepard III to focus his efforts on the Afghan occupation and seemingly the hunt for international terrorist Vladimir Makarov. His feelings after the events of Shah Kanal and Call of Duty 4 of injustice and anger will drive him to start a second Cold War between ultra-nationalist Russia and the United States of America. To increase the power and standing of the U.S. military, he needed someone to rally the entire nation behind him. The perfect incentive to bring the U.S. military to its full power was ultra-nationalist Vladimir Makarov. His actions could indirectly bring down his desired goals of the Second Cold War. To bring about an elite force to stop Makarov, he formed the Task Force 141, the elite multinational counter-terrorism unit with multiple special ops functions. It featured the promoted Captain Jonathan Phil McTavish, Sergeant Gary Roach Sanderson, Lieutenant Simon Ghost Riley, PFC Joseph Allen, and later Captain Jonathan Price. Lieutenant General Herschel von Shepard III was in command of Task Force 141 and took the trail in the Caucasus Mountains. The events in Modern Warfare 2 are theorized to take place during April. The recent defeat of the Op Force in Call of Duty 4 rebuilds its numbers and equipment, regains its power and confidence, and invades Afghanistan. The current Op Force leader is unknown, as Khaled al Assad was killed by Captain Jonathan Price, but the Op Force has probably been degraded to a minority militia in Afghanistan. During this time, PFC Joseph Allen of the U.S. Army Rangers helped Sergeant Foley train Afghan National Army troops at Far Base Phoenix in Afghanistan. He was born in Ithaca, New York in 1994. He also completed the pit with high marks, the general Shepard observed. Allen, Foley, and Dunn entered a op four occupied town in the Red Zone in Afghanistan, to rescue a stranding unit of BCT-1. As it starts, Allen and the Army Rangers defend an M-104 Wolverine codenamed Bigfoot as it lays a playable bridge to the occupied town. The player and his teammates enter a convoy into the town. Allen enters a Humvee and manages to attach new gun. They scout the town but until they are ambushed by an overrun spree. They escape but RTG 7 secure the convoy. Sergeant Foley's team locates the overrun spree and attempts to rescue the stranded unit of BC21. He eliminates the hostile from group and regroups the Rangers. Shepard enlists PFC Joseph Allen into his task force 141. The scene then switches to the Tian Shan Mountain Range, Kazakhstan. Was Sergeant Gary Roach Sanderson and his commanding officer, Captain John Silk McTavish, to extract an ACS module from a snowy mountaintop base. They operate in stealth as they quietly eliminate patrols to plant C4 and fueling stations. They soon arrive at a hangar where a crash of satellite remains. This Sat 1 satellite was supposedly a U.S. orbital object that crash landed to ultranationalist hands. The satellite contained an ACS module which contained highly classified security information from America's defense systems. Task Force 141 was dispatched to retrieve the ACS module for any information required. It was too late, however, as the Sakai International Airport Moscow, Russia was able to successfully enter the USA. As soon as Roach discovers the ACS module, the cover is blown, as made to catch off in the squad corner room. Roach initiates Plan B, the C4 fueling station. Soap and Roach escape the base via snowmobiles through the forest and mountain range to a large gorge where they escape to the extracting helicopter on the other side. General Shepard handpicks Joseph Allen to enter the CIA to impersonate Alexei Borodin, 
Maybe I shall terrorist Vladimir Makarov's plan. Escape the civilian massacre at Kiev International Airport in Moscow. After the mass killing of innocent civilians, Makarov discovers Alexei Borodin truly be Joseph Allen. Makarov kills him and leaves him to dead at the scene. The FSB, the Russian special ops, soon locate and identify the body, and President Vorchevsky declares all out war in the United States of America. This event obviously heavily impacts the campaign of Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. This foreshadows Shepard's betrayal of Task Force 141 later, as it's revealed that Shepard screwed Allen over to continue his evil intentions. In the aftermath of the events of No Russian, Task Force 141 falls a lead to the Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. They locate an associate of Vladimir Makarov, Alejandro Rojas, a black market arms dealer. After a brief chase of the street and interrogation of his assistant, they locate Rojas thrown into the villa, protected by the local militia. Roach takes Meet and Royce inside the favela slums, where they engage in an extremely heated firefight. Meet and Royce eventually die, but Roach survives and continues his mission to find Rojas. He makes his way solo throughout, encountering endless waves of Brazilian militia in the alleys and rooftops, saying he kept with ghosts. This one is seen by Rojas will escape, so it bursts through a window and pins Rojas onto a car. Those videos are helped up their extraction, but they are unresponsive due to all American aircraft currently occupied fighting against the invading Russian forces in America. Soap then considers calling for Nikolai from the Paul Fort to extract him out of Brazil as the sun sets in a blood-stained favela. At this time, General Shepard is named Supreme Commander of all the United States' military power by the Secretary of Defense for his insight on the threat that Russia and Vladimir Makarov presented, just as he wanted for his secret plan. Shepard had achieved World War III. He just needed enemy intelligence to win the war and regain the United States as a global superpower via military. With the full power of 3.5 million soldiers as of 2016, he would bring the U.S. as the mightiest power on the planet and silence himself as a national hero by bringing down ultra-nationalist Russia to its knees. It was also at this time when Shepard acquired the services of the Shadow Company. The Russian government had declared war on the United States of America, seeking revenge for the deaths of hundreds of innocent civilians during the events of No Russian, believing that the terrorists were Americans. The ultra-nationalists had made a duplicate of the ACS module covered by Captain Tavish and Sergeant Sanderson in Kazakhstan. They glitched the early warning systems of NORAD. This allowed them to enter the USA relatively silent without opposition. Their military equipment is even more powerful than Call of Duty 4, employing trained specialists in the field rather than militia-like men, equipping stronger war machines, such as the BTR-80s and Havoc gunships. The ultra-nationalists used cargo planes to airdrop troops, armor, and equipment, while fire jets clear the land of enemy forces. Meanwhile, in northeastern Virginia, USA, Sergeant Foley of the 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, leads Corporal Dunn, the newly recruited Private James Ramirez, and the rest of the squad into an unspecified city in Virginia during the start of the World War III. So the squad first evades an ambush from a BTR-80 in a small neighborhood and leads them into a plaza containing Nate's restaurant, Burger Town, Taco de Go, and the CRB Financial Bank. The squad engages the ultra-nationalists in the plaza to regroup with a wrecked cave low and a downed squad protecting a high-value individual, codenamed Raptor. Ramirez and his team make their way to the roof and provide sniper cover for Raptors at Nates. Nates is then considerably damaged and UAV Predator drone fires a missile upon them. The squad recovers the Predator drone at a Nova gas station and uses it against them. As two B eight BTR-80s emerge and get obliterated, Nates then further destroy Nates, forcing Foley to move Raptor to Burger Town. They defend themselves from ultra-nationalist attack until a Predator is shot down and two Russian gunships arrive. The Rangers destroy them and a convoy arrives to extract Raptor and send Foley's team to a neighborhood called Arcadia for the rescue operation of civilians. Taking place right after Wolverines, Private James Ramirez joins Sergeant Foley in Arcadia to eliminate the ultra-nationalist forces from the overwhelmed neighborhood at checkpoints, mansions, and condos and houses in Virginia. They encounter foot soldiers, BTR tanks, Russian helicopters as they view endless pave roads across the sky, transporting citizens from the battle zones. Eventually, they reach the anti-aircraft stations and supply trucks. They target the AA batteries and the Air Force to eliminate the targets. General Shepard, who now takes control of Sergeant Foley's regiment, orders the squad to extract a high-value individual on 8677 Brickinger Road next to a crashed cargo plane. Further inspection reveals HBI is dead in the panic room with the briefcase and the empty desert eagle. Another body is found just outside the panic room. The Rangers take photos as Foley announces that the HBI is dead. The HBI was supposedly containing critical intelligence documents with the Bryn the Briefcase, as illustrated by General Shepard. 
The body outside the panic room has been suggested to be Victor, who assisted Joseph Allen and Vladimir Makarov in the events in the Russian. He and Makarov were the only ones left alive after the Zakai International Airport massacre. It is speculated that he was sent to kill the HBI, hence the crashed cargo plane outside the house. Picking up from takedown in Brazil, Task Force 141 completes interrogation of Alejandro Rojas and beckons to make lights and call duty forward to pick them up. The command cannot extract them as all U.S. aircraft have been banned from Brazilian airspace due to destruction. Therefore, they contact Nikolai, now a mercenary pilot, to extract them from Brazil. They make their way through the streets and apartment buildings, encountering the Brazilian militia and the enemy's tall trucks armed to the teeth. They eventually cross over from the suburban district to the rooftops to prevent rockets from hitting the glass paveway. They jump across gaps and run over obstacles in a free running fashion to an astounding leap to Nikolai's paveway. Roach fails to make the jump and falls to the ground. He regains consciousness to see the massive numbers of militia surround Roach. He runs through the buildings and houses and makes it to the rooftops. Nikolai spots him and tracks him as the militia fire on Roach. The paveway loses fuel due to weapon damage, forcing Roach to get on the helicopter in 30 seconds. He slides down a slanted roof onto a cliffside house to jump to Nikolai's paveway. He makes a jump as Nikolai transports the squad to the submarine that takes him to the east coast of Russia. The information gathered from all Hunter Rojas was that Makarov had a man on hate with Prisoner 627 from the Russian Gulag. Task Force 141 plans to use him as bait for Makarov. To get air support on the prison break, however, they must eliminate the hostiles on the Vikareva 36 oil platform containing hostages, SAM sites, and more. The squad enters the oil rig via SUVs underwater and kills the patrol guards using suppressed weapons and knives. The squad moves to the first sector to breach and clear a room full of ultranationalist hostiles. They eliminate the ultranationalists and free the hostages. They travel to the second deck to breach and clear the second room full of ultranationalists and their hostages. They eliminate them without alarm. Roach plants C4 onto one of the bodies and hides with soap. As soon as ultranationalists examine the room, the C4 blows and the alarm has started to sound as Task Force 141 moves in. The team moves from deck to deck until they reach top deck or as the ultranationalists make a last stand with the thermal scopes and smoke streams. Roach breaches the last room full of hostages and to ultranationalists and tons of explosive barrels. He succeeds in the marine move into the shore town sites as Roach, Soap, and Ghost join a squad in towards the Gulag team in Prisoner 627. The goal four is Captain McTavish and Sergeant Sanderson on a support helicopter towards the Gulag containing Prisoner 627. The Gulag used to be a castle in the late 1800s that will stand any siege in any winter. Later, later the Castle Converted Monastery didn't survive the Great Purge in the 1930s, connected by Joseph Allen and the Soviet Union, according to Soap. The monastery converted to Gulag contained POWs of the Russian loyalists or war criminals in Call of Duty Roche, Soap, and the rest of Task Force 141 invaded the Gulag. They soon reach control room where Ghost acts as an all seeing eye for the rest of the 141 within the Gulag. The rest of the squad makes their way to the army to use stronger ammo and they prepare to face an onslaught of ultranationals with riot shields. They soon reach the maintenance areas in isolation from the Russian hostiles. They breach the shower room with overlooking the Russians on the second floor and riot shields and guns on the floor. They survive and reach the room containing Prisoner 627. Roach breaches but is knocked down. The Muslim with AK-47 points at Roach. Prisoner 627 is now revealed to be Captain Price. Soap and Price recognize each other, then Soap comes back to M1911 using Call B4 to kill and then to kind. The Navy no sooner starts a bombardment of the Gulag. The building starts to collapse as the squad and Price escape the Gulag with a brief line and walls crumbling. The escape hell is in sight, but the gray pile blocks their path. They retreat to the dead end kitchen with a large bomb about to detonate. Soap fires a flare from his M203 grenade launcher, and the rescue hell arrives and straps the team as bombs detonate and pulling to fire a weapon and destroy the Gulag. Meanwhile, Private James Ramirez recovers in an underground bunker at the Washington Monument as he sees other rangers working on recognized laptops, healing injured soldiers while trying to recollect himself after viewing horrific scenes of death and destruction. The scene then shifts to the war-torn capital of America, the Washington Monument in flames, and the smoke and blood of American and Russian blood. Foley's team is to secure the Washington Monument mini vest and the ultranationalist control. Ramirez enters with his team, passing dead, bloody rangers and armed ultranationalists. Eventually, he reaches an alcove stocked with high-caliber sniper rifles, javelins, stingers, and claymores. Ramirez fires missiles at attacking helicopters and tanks and squads. Command then orders the team to continue the rescue helicopter and gains of being a real nationalist. 
The mirrors entered with a team of black hawks and little birds across the dry shore landscape towards a World War II Marine, armed with the mini gun and high explosive rounds. They ravaged the Russian camp and destroyed cars, soldiers, and battle vehicles. Command then orders all units to the Washington area to retreat to the safe zone, as according to evacuation order April. As just as soon, a SAM site fires a missile at its Black Hawk from a Robert F. Kennedy Department of Justice building. Private James Ramirez wakes up to a last stand with a crash chopper, with his team fighting off impossible masses of Russians and gunships. The spotlight of a helicopter announcing their doom.